Hi there, this is Abhishek. In this video, I will continue my conversation about the simple linear regression, where in the previous video, I talked about how you can create a simple linear regression equation here in the R by utilizing the functions LM and uh, its related function to see the output and results. And in this video, the intention is to talk about the interpretation of uh, different outputs that comes from the linear equations or the linear regression. So if you recall, here in the summary command, we got the output, this, the good number of, you know, different variables and coefficients and different statistics we got out from this equation. But uh, if we don't really understand the meaning of it, it will be really hard for us to define whether the work that we are doing is going in the right direction or not or do we need to accept this equation for making a prediction or not so what i have done is i have taken this uh, entire thing into uh, one of my excel spreadsheets and that's where you know i can do a little bit of uh, writing also if required because here in case of uh, in case of r I cannot write directly over the screen. So if you recall, here is the formula that we entered where we looked at the orange data set, which was about the orange trees and their age and circumference. And we wanted to predict the, the circumference based on the age of the tree. So we got the statistics. So very first one is the residual. So residuals are nothing, but they are the equation which is observed minus predicted value so that means the difference between the observed and predicted values based on this equation and here it shows what is the minimum the first quartile median the third quartile and the maximum difference that it is able to get and that becomes more meaningful when we will talk about the residual plots because all of these values when it gets plotted on the plot uh, it tells more about how well our uh, assumptions of regression equations are met. That's where we use the residual analysis. But just to tell you what residuals are, there this is the difference between the observed and predicted values. The second is the estimate, uh, which tells about a uh, little bit about the equation. So, for example. Uh, intercept in this case we will not going to uh, mention but what it basically says that even if the age is zero what will be the circumference of the uh, what will be the circumference or the average circumference so in that case since it is not possible there has to be certain age that's why I said it is not that much meaningful but the age is meaningful which is saying that if age is increasing by uh, one year then the circumference of the tree will going to be increased by 0 0.106770 so that's how you should really interpret in each and every equation where you have the estimate of the coefficient so or this variable apart from this the standard error standard error is nothing but the standard deviation of estimate which tells the variation of data uh, or or in other terms, it it helps us identifying the accuracy of the the age variable or the variable that you are using in the linear equation. So the less of the value of the standard error, the better or the accurate the equation will be. So here in this case, it is very less. That means we can understand or we can define. Okay, this is something giving us or will give us the accurate results when we will put it in a equation or trying to predict the values out of it. The t value, uh, if we look at the formula for t value, then it is nothing but the uh, estimate divided by standard error. So what it means is 17.399650 divided by 8.622660. And I will just have to put equal sign. And you can see, the value is similar 2.017898 2 
So if we round it off to three decimals, then it will be 2.018. And that's what the value over here. So the T value and the P value basically helps us uh, decide um, about the equation, whether it is, uh, whether we are really accepting this formula or accepting these equations or not. And uh, in, in generally, uh, as a rule of thumb, we look at the P value and say, if P is less than 0 0.05, then in that case, we will going to accept the equation and we'll move ahead with the prediction. So here in this case, the value is very less as it is uh, defined with the scientific notation. So that means it is something 0 0.0000, I think up to 14 points, and then it is showing some number out of it. And that reflects the value is really, really very less and we can go ahead and accept this equation. But uh, if we talk about what it really tells what does it mean that uh, 0 0.05 if the value of p is less than 0 0.05 then you are going to accept this equation so 0 0.05 basically says that there is just five percent chance when your equation can go wrong and that's why we say if the chances are even less than five percent that means it is a good predictor variable so that's what it basically helps in in accepting or rejecting the equation the p value so whenever uh, you need to accept or reject the equation just remember this rule of thumb that it, the value of the predictor variable should be less than 0 0.05 now let's come and understand these residual standard errors and couple of other terms so the residual standard error as the name suggests basically the variability around the residuals that are nothing but the difference between observed minus predicted value so when the value is uh, near to zero and all near to zero or that means it's less then we can make an assumption that it is a perfectly uh, fitting value or the fitting equation but generally in practical scenario it is very less or maybe result into overfitting of equation so you may be uh, wondering that overfitting is now a new term. So probably, you know, I can explain this in a different video, but that means uh, we are moving in a very uh, strong direction or uh, we are trying to overfit the equation by applying more and more variable where, you know, it may uh, deviate or it may not give us the uh, right output or the right predicted values. So I will leave this uh, topic for the next video, but uh, for residual standard error, what you can understand is the res the variability of the values around the resi observed residual values. And less the value, better the uh, model is. So next is the multiple R squared and the adjusted R squared. So R squared is nothing but it says that 83% of variability in the uh, in the circumference can be explained by the variable age. That means uh, age has a very good, uh, age is a very good predictor. So if anything which is near to one, uh, that means in, in terms of R squared value, that means it the value of, uh, or that predictor value, of the variable is good. And adjusted R squared in this case is not that much meaningful because adjusted R square is meaningful in the case where you have multiple uh, variables. In that case, uh, as you keep on increasing the value, the new variables in case of a multiple regression, the adjusted R square values keeps going down. Here in this case is pretty much similar to the R square value. So that's why I said it is not that much meaningful. But it helps us identifying that as you are keep on increasing the values of the variable uh, what what is the variability with these overall variables you are able to explain in the uh, in the dependent variable or the uh, y value so now let's come to the f statistic so f statistics nothing but the uh, output of your ANOVA test which basically helps us understanding whether the whether the difference between the two sample populations are uh, significant enough or not 
and uh, with that uh, definition you can also understand that ANOVA is another property which gets covered over here and F statistics is kind of an output of the ANOVA test but in this entire line the value we should really look for the simple linear regression perspective is the p-value again which is similar to your earlier value because we just have one variable and that's why uh, since it is less than 0 0.05 in case of F statistics also we can conclude that this overall equation is significant enough and we can go ahead and do the prediction of values based on the equation that we have made. So this is, these are all these different definitions uh, that I have covered over here and I hope uh, you are able to find the meaningful information from all these different terms and terminologies. And uh, in the next video, we will move on to a couple of more advanced topics and uh, talk about them pretty much in detail.